Hey everybody, it's Boo Ray Perry, and on this episode of Boo Ray Explains, I'm going to explain lens compression. Before we get started, don't forget to check out my podcast. It's called Photobomb. It's available anywhere that podcasts are found. Be sure and join my group on Facebook. It's called Pro Photo Talk with Boo Ray Perry. And follow me on Instagram. I post examples of my work there, but I also just post a lot of funny stuff. So you, it'll be worth it. <laughs> You'll be glad that you've got me in your feed. So be sure and follow me on Instagram. All right, we're going to talk about lens compression today because so far in this series, I think we're at the point where lens compression is something that you need to learn about because we've talked about the exposure triangle and, and how uh, photography works in terms of using the exposure pro uh, triangle to get the exposure that you want. And we started to talk a little bit about composition because we talked about the rule of thirds. By the way, if you don't know what I'm talking about, go back and watch this from the beginning. Uh, the Boo Explains series is in order for a reason. It's so that you can start with the very simplest concepts and build your way up to the more difficult concepts. So now, since we're talking about the rule of thirds in the last video, we talked about composition. Let's talk about lens compression because lens compression makes a big difference in the images that you shoot. Now, lens compression is just the result of using a zoom lens or uh, it can be a prime lens, but the prime lens needs to be like, you know, a 200 millimeter prime, something along those lines. Uh, using this lens to make the background appear bigger or closer to your subject. And it's the easiest thing in the world to see. So I just went outside and I took a couple of pictures to quickly demonstrate it. So the first picture I'm showing you now, uh, this is a picture of a little flag on a mailbox. Now look at the car in the background. You see how small the car is? You see the size of the car related to the size of the flag? Now, this was shot with my big zoom lens, right? This one right here, which is a, what, 50 to 140? It's a 50 to 140 millimeter zoom lens uh, on a, um, an APS-C that's equivalent to a 70 to 200 millimeter uh, zoom lens, basically, on a full-frame camera. So I shot this at 50 millimeters. And then I backed up, I zoomed all the way in as much as I could, and I shot it again, and I tried as much as I could anyway, I didn't use a tripod, but I tried to get the flag to be the same size in the frame. <clears throat> so the, the flag doesn't move. The flag is the same size in the frame. But look at the background. Do you see how the background has gotten closer, right? See how it's closer now to the flag? The car's gotten bigger. That is lens compression. It's very, very simple, really. Um, there's a couple of things you need to know about it. First of all, you have to be using a big zoom in order to compress the background. Uh, you typically don't see it until you start to get up around 135 millimeters with a full frame camera. And second, if you really wanna see the effect, you need your background to be at least twice as far from your subject as you are. So if you're standing 10 feet in front of your subject, the background needs to be at least 20 feet away or you're really not gonna see a real noticeable effect when it comes to lens compression. So why do we do it? You know, what, what's good about lens compression? Well, it's just one more tool that we have for manipulating our environment to create the image that we want and to tell the story that we want. So let's look at these two images from a bar mitzvah session that I did. So in this image, you can see that I am using lens compression to make those buildings, which are quite a bit far away from those two girls, to make those buildings come in close and get bigger. So I got there with my lenses, I got in my spot, it was very cramped, I couldn't back up anymore, and I switched lenses and used my zooms until I got those buildings where I wanted them to be. So you can literally move your background. You can, say, you, you can say to the building, I'd like you to move a little closer, please, or back up a little bit. You can move a building by using lens compression. And then uh, later, when I was shooting on the street, I was across the street next to a tree, and I wanted the marquee of the Tampa Theater to be very big and very blurry in the background. So I backed up as far as I could, I got low, and I zoomed in to make that marquee get very, very big. If you had been standing there with me, I don't have a picture where it's not big, I'm sorry, but if you've been standing there, you would have known that, that marquee does not look that big when you're standing right there. But what I did was I zoomed in and I used lens compression to make that marquee get bigger, to bring my background 
closer. You see this used all the time when you are uh, doing anything that involves a landscape. So I was in Colorado and I wanted a picture with a mountain behind me. I think this might be Pikes Peak. If it isn't Pikes Peak, it's just to the left of it. And so I asked the person who is taking the picture, I, I was like, get down low, back up as far as you can and zoom in on me so the mountain will get as big as possible in the background. Because if you had taken this picture with a 50 millimeter lens, then that mountain would have been so tiny and so far away. But by zooming in, you can really change your picture. I do this all the time when I shoot on the beach. If the sun is behind the couple, I will back way up and zoom in to make the sun really, really big. So lens compression is really, really great in photography, and it will really change how your images look and give you so much control over what you're going to do. But here's what's really cool about lens compre <laughs> compression. We're not gonna talk about photography now, we're gonna talk about video. Specifically, we're gonna talk about movies and where you see lens compression all the time. And I think it's really, really cool. It's one of my favorite things. So Alfred Hitchcock made this movie called Vertigo. And in the movie, he did this shot and it's, it's called a dolly zoom. And it was so cool and so effective that it now gets copied all the time and used in tons of movies. And you've seen this shot. You probably didn't realize that's what you were seeing was lens compression, but it is. Here's how hard it is to get this shot. First, you have to take the camera and put it up close to the actor and focus on the actor's face. Now the background is gonna seem far away because you're using a wide angle lens to get close to the actor. Then you have to dolly the shot. And what dollying means, a dolly is a platform that they put the camera on and it rolls. And that platform goes on a set of tracks. They, they lay tracks now. And that way they have a couple of guys, they're called grips. And the grips can move the camera up and down the tracks. So they pull the camera back away from the actor, right? So the actor's gonna be getting smaller because the camera's backing up. But at the same time that they're pulling the camera back, the camera operator will zoom in on the actor's face. And it has to be done just right. You have to zoom in at the exact speed that the camera is backing up. Because the, the plan is you want the actor's face to stay in the frame exactly in the same place and the same size. That's where you want to stay. But because you are backing up, because you are zooming in, the background will get closer. Okay? So the background gets closer, right? That's, that's one way of do doing the dolly zoom. The other way of doing the dolly zoom is to start way back here and zoom in on the actor's face and then push in. And as you push in, make the camera wider and then the background will fall away because it will get bigger and farther away from your subject. It's been used in lots of movies, but I think probably the first time I saw it and noticed it was in Jaws. See that? See how the background moved? The actor pretty much stayed in the same place, but the background moved. That is a dolly zoom or a vertigo zoom or a Hitchcock zoom. And once you see it, you'll start to see it everywhere. It is so popular that they even use it in animation. This is a scene from Ratatouille, and you see how they're using lens compression or simulated lens compression because <laughs> there's no lens. It's, it's actually just animation, but this is such a popular look and such a great storytelling device that they're simulating a camera, a dolly zoom, to make the television get bigger in the scene without the rat changing. So that's lens compression. It is so popular, they fake it in animation but you should be using it all the time. So if you've got a zoom lens, practice with it. Go outside, find some things that are close and far, take a picture of the thing that's close, back up, zoom in, see what it does to your background. Because once you open up the idea of lens compression so that you can see it, you start to see your world differently. You start to, you know, I, I can't tell you how many times I will be out and about and I'll see, you know, people taking pictures with their camera, their, their cell phone, and they'll be like, oh, take a picture of me in front of this thing. And I'll be thinking, yeah, that thing is so far away that this picture is going to be you in front of some tiny little thing in the background. If I was taking that picture, I would be backed up and using a zoom lens and that thing in the background, the Eiffel Tower, whatever it is, would be huge and would really take up the frame. So once you start to use lens compression, you will never stop using it. It will become like a go-to thing in your arsenal is what lens do I use to get this shot? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Excuse me. So that's 
lens compression. Be sure and throw me a like and throw me a subscribe and say something in the comments and watch this entire series because I'm trying to cover every single definition I can think of regarding photography so that by the time I'm done, you will be an expert at photography. Thanks for watching.